You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome back to the Claret and Blue podcast. I'm your host today, John Townley, and I'm joined by Pat Rowe. Pat, how are we? Thank you. I'm well, thank you very much. Um, a bit bored in the international break, but yeah, getting yes. ready to clock on at my shift at three, but yeah, hopping on here first, yourself. Yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. A very boring weekend, as you mentioned. I think we're on the the, the other side of the international break, though, aren't we now? So it's yeah. it's, it's looking a bit right, clearer. We've got Southgate football to watch later, which will keep everyone entertained. <laughs> exactly that, yeah. That was great Friday night viewing. Um, well, so, yeah, as you say, so second half of the, of the international break now leads to the weekend. A quick feeler of, of, of that game, Pat. It was a bit of a tough place to go after a break. But not maybe we could have a tougher team, but I think it'll be a hard game nonetheless, especially with the injuries we've just had. It's a bit bit of a baptism of fire, maybe after two weeks off. Yeah, well, last time we went there, it was joy to watch, wasn't it? Callum Chambers harnessing his inner uh, Iniesta. It was just one of those that run of the games, wasn't it? it was at Leeds, Brighton, Southampton yeah. was the other one. Southampton leaves in the same run, we better win this one as well. Yeah. But yeah, I, I can't see I can't really see a scintillating performance coming this weekend. I think it'll be more of the same if we do win. So the Southampton victory, you know, grind out the result. It's a results based industry. I mean, there's a there's a proportion of the fan base I might be in there, to be honest, that is like, <laughs> Yes, we won, but how good was the football and whatnot? But um yeah, I'm going into it positive, but the the Kamara injury was a tough one to take, wasn't it? It's it just yeah. As I said in the last one with Dan, every time we get a win, we seem to sacrifice one of our sacrifice one of our best players. So we better wrap Emmy Martinez in bubble wrap at Leeds, and I think he wants to be wrapped in bubble wrap by the sounds of it as well. With all these claims coming out from Argentina saying they're not going to play the last two games, I think I think it's Brighton and United we've got yeah. before. I don't know the legitimacy of that, but yeah, that's a bit of a frightening uh, prospect. Yeah, something tells me that I can't see Christian Bursler allowing that, especially after they've given them. Yeah. When was it last season? I think the start of last season yeah. when they gave him that time off uh, to go and yeah, play yeah. from. Yeah. Confusing last season, wasn't it? Yeah. All the COVID stuff. Yeah, that's the nearest one. So, uh, no, as you mentioned, Kamara injury, Dino injury, it's it's all sort of piling up on us and, uh, a little bit. But we're almost in that sort of no man, sort of, I don't know, no man's land at the moment without the yeah. summer window, the January window, international break. It's, it's been a really quiet week for us, especially as, as you know, working with the content. Very quiet. Uh, yeah. So today we're going to be talking about contracts. As I mentioned, between the summer window, the January window, it's probably about the right time where clubs start to look at where they are. Not necessarily in terms of contracts expiring next summer. But then we obviously have the the next summer after that as well, because um, it's not a quick thing organising contracts as, we, as we've seen with the likes of Douglas Louise yes. um, over the last year. So let's begin with the players that are out of contracts in the coming summer, so 2023. Um, mm-hmm. I think we all know who they are. So that's 10 months remaining on the contracts of Ashley Young, Frederick Gilbert, Jed Steer, and Douglas Louise, obviously. Yeah. Uh, should we start with Freddie Gilbert? Because there's a bit of a uh, news, I suppose, yeah. coming out this afternoon. The squad squad photo was released for the new season. If anyone hasn't seen it, the only omission is, of course, Frederick Gilbert. Yeah. Also yeah. taken out of the club website too the other week. At, you know, I think it's probably nailed on that he's going to be leaving the club. Mm-hmm. Uh, next summer whether that's a January move as well to sort of uh, set up that move yeah. as well do you think it's been sort of harshly dealt with or is it something where the club know they want to offload him he knows he's leaving and he just hasn't had that move but yeah. it seems a bit a bit harsh doesn't it? sort of push him aside like we have done yeah I mean I've always liked Gilbert like when I think back to like the the Leicester semi final, the League Cup semi final. Watching when he scored there, and just like that season when it first won in the Premier League, I did like him. But Smith didn't fancy him, and now Gerrard doesn't really fancy him either. Apparently, I've read a few a few stories that the move was there, and um, it just never materialised for one reason or another. I've read a few things on Twitter as well, people saying that. But the vast majority of the fan base like are siding with Gilbert, and this is kind of one for me. Like that's the overall reaction I see it. And I kind of take it with a bit of a pinch of salt, to be honest. Like, there's something not quite right for him to still be at the club if he's so unhappy and whatnot. And the offers were seemingly floating around. So I'd, I'd take it with a bit of a pinch of salt. It's obviously, something's happened. He's been, if he's being let, taken off the club website, not in the photo, something's yeah. happened behind the scenes. He's taken to Twitter, hasn't he? He doesn't sound too happy there. But, you know, I don't know. I don't believe the whole thing he's been 
harshly done by. I feel like Villa fans like to assume a lot of things. I don't want to jump on on the boat and say, oh yeah, the Villa have mistreated this player and whatnot. Well, I think there's probably more to it. I think the players probably play a, a big factor in it as well. But yeah, it's safe to say I don't think he has a, a future at the club past 2023. He's not one we should be discussing uh, extending his stay in Claret and Blue. <laughs> I think it'll yeah, be uh, gone. I think, as you mentioned, Pat, it's, we're not privy to what, happened, what happens within the club, but it's probably a common thing between players and their agents that a club will tell them in the summer window you're not fancied here and with your agent you have to try and find a new club and that hasn't happened for mm-hmm. reason X, Y and Z so as you say it probably seems a bit harsh from the outside but it's that, that's football isn't it it's again it's, it's harsh business it's a it's you know a multi-billion pound industry there's there's a, there's a future for Freddie Gilbert away from Villa. It's just a shame that it's all dragging. Especially how well he played last season. I feel like every time I saw a team of the week, it had Gilbert right back for Strasbourg. So I, I don't believe that there wasn't a team that would have taken him. I just don't know if he wanted that move, to be honest. Possibly so, yeah. I, you know, with what's happening with the club at the moment, with Gerard and the pressure, you wonder if it's Gilbert. Maybe thinking if I, if I, if I can stick around, maybe I can impress the next manager, Matt Cashin. Yeah. Too, so... It's probably determined to get in that Villa team, but it's, again, yeah. it hasn't quite happened. Yeah. Another right back who's played well, though, or left back, a very versatile player, I suppose, and Ashley Young, contract out in 23. I think it's almost a, a foregone conclusion, or it was at least last summer that it was like a, a one year extension. Let's see yeah. how it goes. And after that, he'll you know probably be hanging up his boots and maybe going into coaching. But I, I remember yeah. saying to Ashley a couple of weeks ago, he's, he's probably as fit as he's ever been. He's playing as well, as best as he probably has done for a few years. And he was into Milan a few years ago as well on, uh, on Antonio Conte. Do we give him a new deal if he continues how he is? Because again, at the weekend, I'm thinking if Mike Cash is fit, obviously Luca Dean will be injured. You just move um, Ashley Young over to the left, even though we've just bought in uh, mm-hmm. a left back in Augustinson. Ashley Young yeah. has got that, you know, he's, he's got the shirt. So I, I'd be happy to give him another year. It kind of ages a number. Um, it'd be 38, I think, this time. Yeah, of month. yeah. <laughs> but if he's you know, literally age is just the number because until he gets a bad injury or until he, he sort of breaks down, I think he's yeah. very useful. Yeah, if you're relying on your pace to defend, you're probably not a good defender, really, are you? Because you're just yeah. recovering. Um, yeah, he's aging like a fine wine, isn't he? That performance against Foden, joy to watch. Yeah. Southampton again, joy to watch. It's just, it just great to see. And I love Ashley Young, obviously. Not the first Villa team I ever watched, or but similar to our age, like 22, 23. Yeah. Um, Ashley Young with that 20, 2008, I think it was 2007 he arrived and then through to like 2011, he, he was there, wasn't he? So it's just it's just unreal to see him back, like contributing to the team. And not you'd think it'd be as a coach now, but it's not. Yeah. He's still on the pitch, like helping us grind out wins, which is just amazing. Um, I think I've read somewhere that he is starting to do his coaching badges or he's going to start doing it this season. So, you know, with Kane Kessler Hayden hopefully coming off a, a good season in the championship and coming back to Villa next season. I'd like to see more of him. I thought he looked really bright in pre-season. So maybe Young does take on a bit more of like a, obviously he'll fill in if he needs to put out some fires, but he's good for the dressing room, continue, continues doing his coaching and maybe he does take on a bit of a coaching role next season. Good uh, mentor for Kessler Hayden. I know Cash is experienced, but he's not exactly like someone that can really guide a young player, is he yet? I think Cash is only 25, 26. So yeah, I think he's, I'd definitely sign him to a new deal. I just, wouldn't see him playing as big as a role as he currently is for the uh, foreseeable future. I don't know how long he can keep this up. <laughs> like I say, age is just a number, but you know, sometimes the knees just give give way on, on people. So, um, no, yeah, he's just great to have around. I'd definitely keep him. And Gerard seems to love him as well, doesn't he? Yeah, so, for sure. um, I think he's definitely one we'll be sticking around. Definitely. Yeah. It's an interesting one, whether he plays or not, whatever it is, you presume they'd want to stick around just in the mm-hmm. club. Um, almost not exactly like John Terry but obviously Terry had that playing days and then he came into the club straight away so it seems yeah. to be some sort of pathway there that the club are willing to give um, to ex-pros yeah. I suppose as soon as they retire um, but then the next one that we're going to talk about Douglas Louise probably more of a sort of well-publicised one obviously with the Arsenal on deadline day a few weeks ago or months ago now or the start of the month sorry um, £40 million valuation that Villa set Arsenal bid three times, all of them get rejected. So clearly he's in the club's plans, but mm-hmm. I really don't, I can't envisage him staying beyond this summer. I just can't, unless we're giving him or promising, you know, something that we're probably not going to deliver because he doesn't play every game either. Yeah, that's he, seems to, he seems to be a player that would fit in 
to a top club who can keep the ball and the you know an Arsenal Man City has you know, obviously played for City Arsenal won him Atletico Madrid being linked as well he can't seem to do what he what we know he can do in the Villa team so I can't begrudge him even if he did want to leave and I think that was sort of the message that we were getting on deadline day he'd like to go but obviously he's not going to kick up a fuss because he's not that sort of player he's not a bad egg mm-hmm. but yeah this time in 12 months if he's wearing a Villa shirt I'd be staggered to be honest yeah I'm in the same boat I think we haven't messed up because it's just been unlucky circumstances, obviously. But like last season when Nakamba got injured, he had to go and fill in again at the number number six, didn't he? We've, we've had to kind of be forced into playing him there and that's not his position. We haven't seen enough of him in the number eight. And then when he has been available to play number eight, the contract thing's been going on. And Ramsey and McGinn have kind of been preferred for one reason or another. I would have liked to see him play at number eight, and I don't really ever understand how people say he's not good when you've got like the likes of Juventus, AC Milan, right. Roma, Arsenal, all these teams tracking him, interested in him. Yeah, but the writing was kind of on the wall for me when Villa went for Ben Tancor in was it January last season? Uh, yeah, because I I don't think he would have ever been that number six that we signed in Kamara for Kamara to play. I think he was always going to be like a number eight that would replace Louise. Um. So, yeah, the right was on the ball there. As you say, Villa value him at 40 million. Uh, the only reason I think he didn't go on deadline day is because we just didn't have enough time to get a replacement in. I think he wanted the move. This is just my personal opinion, by the way. I don't, I don't know anything. I think he, he wanted the move um, and we just didn't have enough time to get someone in. I think we're probably going to have to bite the bullet in January now. I, I know we got 20 million for, for Chuck Lemecca, but I think I feel like when you invest in a player like Chuck Lemecca, you'd pay the 20 million for the upside when you get him on a long-term contract like they did. I think there's less upside for Louise. You kind of know what he offers and know know what he brings. So I, I think 15 million, that kind of region is probably. If we were rejecting 25 million on deadline day, you can at least get 10 million less than that now. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- I've seen Arsenal looking at other centre mids now as well, so the market might even be a bit smaller for him. Um, but yeah, I, 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 like you say, I'd be staggered if he's in a Villa shirt next year, and it will annoy me because I think he is a Champions League quality player or will be in the future. When he's in that kind of setup and the right team, but um, yeah, I, I can't see him staying. It's a frustrating one, isn't it? Because ever since he joined Villa, we've rarely seen him in that number eight position. Mm-hmm. When he when he first came in, I think it was as you think you say Nakamba playing in that six role. He'd play number eight sporadically, but obviously that's his yeah. first taste of the Premier League. Even though he was at Man City for you know for a fair while, but never played. And then the year after that, I think his project restart. He had that brilliant ten games or so in front of the yeah, back four. Yeah. He looked like a really good holding midfielder. Um, but obviously, he's a number eight. That's where his qualities are. And he just hasn't been able to show it. So, I've, for, for a player who's... How old is Louise now? 24, I think. 24, yeah. 24. Yeah. And for the sort of levels that he showed when he was 20 in Man City, buying him, it, I would be a little frustrated if I'm, if I'm Douglas yeah, Louise. Sure. I haven't played in your position that, that Brazil play you in. And I don't know. It's, it's a strange one. But I think you should say, yeah, I can't see him being in a Villa shirt this time in a year. and. It, it will be a shame because, you know, in a couple of years he will be playing for a top team yeah. and he'll be the one that got away again for Villa. Yeah. Um, those were our 2023 contracts. The, the other one, of course, Jed Steer and it's sort of... Shout out to Jed it, yeah, <laughs> I think he must be the longest. You know, in fact, he definitely is the longest serving player at the club now. Yeah, he is, yeah. Paul Amber didn't he? I think Paul Amber yeah. from Norwich. 20, about 2013, wasn't it, that we signed him mm. and... Obviously, everything that he's done for the club then, and obviously in that season that we signed, uh, that he played in during the playoffs as well, we mm-hmm. sort of is one of those players, one of a few players that we pro- we wouldn't probably be in the Premier League at the moment, or we wouldn't yeah. have had three years in the Premier League without him. Um, so when Jed Steele leaves, I think he's got an Achilles injury at the moment, and injuries yeah. haven't helped him because he's a really good keeper as well as we've seen. But yeah, when he leaves, there'll be more of a sort of um, a parade for Jed Steer, I suppose, across social yeah, media. Definitely. I love him. That The penalty oh, yeah. saves, like you can't, I'll never forget them. The stare yeah. to Mason Holgate as well, it's just legendary. But yeah, yeah I feel sure. like he's a good keeper, but he's just not Premier League level, is he? I think Lukaku kind of identified that yeah. in the game against Chelsea. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so that's why I was excited for him to go out on loan. I think it was Luton, wasn't it? And then he did his oh, Achilles yeah. again. And um, yeah, it's just unlucky for him. The Villa yeah. curse of injuries. Yeah, hopefully he can find himself a club next summer. Uh, and when we get to next summer, the summer of that, oh, that'll be 2023. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, we'll have three players at the moment that will be on the final 12 months of the contract. And it kind of sneaks up on you a little bit. I 
kind of took me for surprise as well. I know mm. you wrote eight on it, Pat. Yeah, yesterday. Uh, Old surprise as well. Yeah, three players out of contracts. One's marvellous in a camber. If we, if we start with him, actually, we'll keep the other two as a secret, yeah. unless people have already read the piece. Um, <laughs> a player that could possibly leave in January, unless the Bubakar Kamara injury is sort of giving him a way forward into the team, which, to be fair, I'm surprised he hasn't had too many um, too many minutes after mm-hmm. what he showed under Gerrard in the first yeah. sort of five games of his tenure. Maybe the injury that he had, uh, that he picked up against Liverpool, sort of set him back and... Now he's sort of, you know, paying the price for that, and potentially he's, there's not the same fitness or whatever he is. It wasn't the same player as what he was. I'm not sure. But thoughts on Nakamba? You should say, as I said, sorry, a year and a half now he could leave the club for free. I think in the summer there was probably an opportunity for him to leave, but he stuck around. Yeah, as you say, Gerard leaned on him heavily in those that opening few games, wasn't it? But those were games where we were literally just closing the door and. Um, hoping for the best, trying to get a 1-0, grind out the 1-0 wins, weren't we? Mm. I feel like he might come back into the team because that's exactly what we're going to try and do now for the next five <laughs> games, to be honest. But um, I do think he'll bring Louise in for Kamara, so I don't know if uh, Nakamba will see too many minutes, but he hasn't played a minute yet, I'm pretty sure, yet in the season. Um, you talk about people having uh, building a squad and whatnot, but if he's not seeing minutes in the cup games and, and everything, what is the reason for him to stay here? I do think Villa have a bit of a problem on their hands with him. Not like a bad problem, but we saw with Trezeguet and El Ghazi, these are players that aren't necessarily done in their careers that we let leave for like 2 million, 2.5 million euros. That's not really good business, is it? Signing players for 10 million and then after three years, losing 8 million on them when they still have a lot of of game time in, in themselves. He's 28. I think he's valued about 6.8 million. So I think we paid 11 million for him, just trying to recoup a bit of money in January, maybe. I think Fulham and Forest were interested in him. So I feel like these are the type of things. That, yeah. Uh, Villa, Villa just need to ensure that we don't lose him for nothing, basically, pretty much. So game time looking limited. I definitely think he's probably one we could move on in, in January, get a bit of money back for him, fund something else. And I think he should be playing football, to be honest. I think he's good at what he does. He breaks at play. If you ask him to do too much, he's, he's going to panic on the ball, um, which is completely fine. He just isn't probably a player that can take Villa to the next level that they want to be, but Villa aren't even at that level. So <laughs> he probably might, he might get some minutes now. I don't know how you feel about him. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wrote a piece uh, early in the week saying maybe that is the time to bring him back into the fold because presumably the reason why he wasn't playing is because you have got Kamara and you have got Louise. Then Donk has just come through the building as well. But they're all different players to what Nakamba gives you. And when he, again, as you mentioned, Pat, we're, we're now, we're sort of back to basics where we were when Gerard first came in. And whether you like it or not, that's where we are. So why can't Nakamba come back? in the play, back. Play the role that we were playing. Maybe that just sort of smacks of, oh, we are completely, you know, we were taking steps backwards or, or whatever it may be. But to be fair, back then, that was the best period that we had under Gerard. So yeah. we can't be too, um, you know, too picky. But it's a shame for the camera, as you mentioned, he kind of arrives at the club um, when we brought in, obviously, a lot of players. I think it was 13 or 14 players in that summer. Um, and yeah, probably half the value that he is now. And as you say, the likes of El Ghazi. Jersey Gay, there's obviously the players as well. And when it's just one of those players, it's okay. But then if you're mm-hmm. spending, say, £30 million on those three players, yeah, and you're recouping, to, doesn't it? exactly, if you're recouping what, like less than £10 million, you're losing yeah. a lot of money there. So, yeah, that is definitely a problem for Villa, especially with those players approaching the prime. The camera's not 32. Yeah, he's, yeah. He must be right. like 28 or so. Yeah, 28. So he's still got something in him. He can, he can do something. He can, like I said, Forrest and Fulham, even though. I look at Forest and Fulham sometimes. I feel like they actually play better football than us. Um, they, he could play, do a job for them. And definitely, if he dropped down into the Championship, I think he'd be fantastic. But I think he's above that, to be honest. Yeah. So the first of that's the first of the three players that could leave in twenty four, summer of twenty four. Sorry for free. So in, in the summer with twelve months on the contracts, another player took me a surprise. Danny Ings joined the club in was it summer of twenty one? Yeah, I think the Grealish yeah. aftermath. Wasn't it? Yeah, so that's that one again snuck up on snuck up on us a little bit. I think it's yeah. a strange one because he's obviously one of three strikes that we have at the club. Uh, first team strikers anyway: Ollie Watkins, Cameron Archer, and Danny Ings. But does that mean that we'll be looking at a striker? Do you think, Pat, in the coming 
summer window. Well, not in summer window. Maybe we're looking in January and summer because it takes again. It's it's not as easy as just picking out a striker and buying them. You look at the striker market at the moment, and you know Skamaka, for example, is 30, 35 million. Hasn't sort of ripped ripped it up yet in the Premier League, and I don't I don't know if it will to be honest. So it's a very difficult market to get right. As we've seen, Danny Ings we bought for thirty million pounds, and again it's kind of struggled in patches. So it's difficult to buy that sort of board that you need. Um, so that's the uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit stuck on that. Danny Ings potentially leaving for free in a year and a half. Yeah, it was never going to be a deal that um, held much value, was it? I think he's thirty now. Villa signing mm. for twenty six million, I think it was. Um, it was always a win now move, and we haven't necessarily won now with him in the side, to be honest. <laughs> um, it's just one. I feel like a decision has to be made next year because he's not even nailing down a starting role consistently. Isn't he? Gerard seems to prefer um, Ollie Watkins if he goes for the one one striker up front, which I can see why Danny Ings preferably doesn't really play with uh, just snippets like I think mm. Brentford last season in in the third kit where him and Wendy linked up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would look at his value. It's already plummeted a bit. I think he's worth around 18 million now. He's going to be wanting to play, wanting to play games. A few clubs have been sniffing around him. I think I think Brighton were mentioned, but obviously they they recruit quite well. So I'm not sure they'd want to want to spend big money on a, on a 30, 31 year old striker who necessarily doesn't guarantee goals anymore. To be honest, like. I know Villa aren't the most creative team, but he's not a, like a guaranteed. If you went and splashed 20 million on him now. So it is a big risk for anyone that wanted to. But yeah, it's another risk that Villa have a player's value just depreciating by the day. And we don't necessarily use them <laughs> like consistently. Yeah. Um, it hasn't gone to plan, that signing. But especially if you want Cameron Archer to have a pathway into the first team. I don't know what's going to happen with that. If he's going to leave on loan again in January. He's yet to play more than 10 minutes in the first team after being given the confidence boost and the back in a Gerrard in pre-season. It just doesn't make sense to be honest, does it? No. So uh yeah, Danny the Danny Ings situation worries me. I feel like that is one that needs to be sorted out next summer and needs to be a priority because if you get to the the twenty twenty four at the end of one year into his deal, he's gonna be looking at pennies again for a player you've invested nearly thirty million in just two seasons ago and not got a great return on at this point yeah. in time. So yeah, that's one that's a priority that needs to be sorted for me. And you need to get your ducks in order, don't you? Because if we are looking next summer at Danny Ings with 12 months on his deal and clubs know that we're looking for a striker or potentially someone to partner Watkins or a backup or, again, if Cameron Archer, we don't know what's happening there. But either way, you, you need more than two first-team strikes in your team, especially if one of, one of them is very experienced. It is a, is a worry because, again, the striker market is so difficult to get right at the moment and you, you don't want to be wasting big money, again, like we have done. So... Yeah, that's certainly one to look out for. And again, one that sort of surprised um, me and you. Uh, mm-hmm. Aaron Mings is the third player that will that could be leaving free again in two summers' times, which is it's a bit of a strange one because he obviously signed a contract when yeah, he signed um, permanently in the summer of 2019 when the club got promoted. So I suppose that is a while ago now, but no. I think he's got an extension. I think he got one when we had a, I remember him holding up like a kazoo top, I'm pretty sure. I think Very he's had one point. in the 2021. The season we were really good, basically. He got he got like a little bumper deal, yeah, but it's just coming to the end now. Yeah, so that, again, that, that's a tricky one. I, I wonder if, because again, that's a player whose value is going down. He's obviously a leader in the dressing room, but then you look at the decision that Gerard's made this made this season. So it's, again, I'm scratching my head at that one, literally. Um, <laughs> where where do we see Tyra Mings in a couple of years? Is, does that run its course? And does he leave the club and go on to pastures new? Or, or are we expecting a new deal? Um, I, think, I think maybe this season's that important for Mings. It could be an extra year or two for him. And then if he, but if he doesn't keep up this sort of consistent start to the season that he's had, maybe that will sort of show that Mings won't be that consistent player that we need or, mm-hmm. or that we, you know, would like to have and maybe a decision will be made later down the line I think if we did it now obviously I'm not going to base this off just his last two performances because I think he has been one of our more consistent I think you and Ash mentioned it how he's been arguably our best player this season Yeah, and I mentioned it at the, the end of last season saying he was probably one of our most consistent players last season but Villa just weren't consistent as a team so when Villa do get found out you probably look to the senior figures and within the squad and Minx is just one of those he gets a lot of stick from the footballing world, not just Villa fans. But it's nice to see him 
um, without the responsibility of being captain, kind of thrive in the role. He, yeah. he just looks, he's back to basics. It's, it's like I said earlier about Nakamba, when you ask him to do too much, the cracks start appearing. When you ask him just to be like a an instinctive defender, last man, challenges in, clear the ball, win aerial battles, his quality, if you just ask him to do that, it's fine. If Villa go back to basics, Tyramings is exactly what we need. But obviously, Villa want, didn't want to go back to basics. We wanted to progress, but we have gone back to basics, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Um, oh, yeah, if he continues the way he's going, I really think Villa need a bit of feel-good factor around the club right now. And I think offering Mings maybe a two-year deal, just a bumper deal, would really just make people happy. <laughs> I feel like a bit more of a connection to the club. I feel like I see a lot of people these days saying how they're losing their connection with the club. And I feel like back in your play that's come out from the shadows... Put in, puts in performances with the team every single week, you know, shows passion, is really involved in the community, rewarding him with a, an extra two years on his deal when he's still got a lot to offer and he's shown that would be a good thing for the club, good thing for the fan base. I always thought that one of the best partnerships going into this season, not taking into account Esri Konza, who's looked a lot better recently as well, um, would be Mings playing on the left, Carlos playing on the right. So I feel like you could feasibly go progress the team with that partnership at the back. Um, but yeah, Mings would definitely be someone I'd be keeping around just for everything, just for the club, his leadership role, his connection with the fans. I feel like fans, I know there's a portion of the fan base that get on his back, but I'd like to say the overriding opinion on Mings is the fans hold him in high regard, everything he's done for the club. So yeah, he'd definitely be someone I'd be looking to keep around. And I think it's probably something we should be looking at now. Um you don't want to be leaving every contract to the last minute because then the transfer rumours start coming, teams start sniffing around. So I'll just get this in order now, yeah. Yeah. If you want well, to be extended. It sends the right message, doesn't it, to the squad as you mentioned? Because yeah. sort of, we have a few of those players at the moment, don't we? The ones that aren't necessarily consistent. But then when they do get on that sort of wave of consistency, it then just fizzles out and we're back to where we were. So if we can sort of take advantage of that, as you mentioned, and um, and capitalise, that'll be a you know a positive thing and one of the only positives that will come out of this part of this season so far. Um, sort of wrap up the conversation, just a quick mention on the 2025 contracts, John McGinn, Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins. So that'll be, well, when is that? So that's a bit, that's obviously a bit later down the line, but then that's like, what, three summers away. But again, yeah. as you mentioned, Pat, earlier, value, player values will start dropping because mm -hmm. the difference between having four years on a contract or even three to then having one or two years as those players will have next summer. Um, they're all, all those three players are very different situations, though. You know, you, you got a captain, someone who's signed a new contract and been here for a while. Mm -hmm. Leon Bailey just joined. Nolly Watkins has been here for a little while too. So again, in, interesting situations on all the contracts for me. I think um, but that's just sort of whistle stop tour again in this sort of no man's land area that we're in at the moment. International break, halfway between the two uh, transfer windows. So that's mm -hmm. the sort of rundown of where we are. Uh, Pat, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I have to go do the uh, eight-hour shift now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. And thanks for everyone who's uh, interacted in the comments and watched our podcast. And we'll catch you next time. Up the Villa. Cheers, guys. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode.